you've reached level 50, started doing your various daily activities, and you've reached at least gear score 340. Now what? My name is Livid and welcome back to Legacy Game. Today, we are diving back into Lost Ark and showing you exactly how to tackle the very first Abyssal Dungeon, Demon Beast Canyon. Let's just get right into it. Because this is the first Abyssal Dungeon that you will encounter, I think it's important in this video to just touch on a few things first. Abyssal Dungeons are essential to your progression, because in addition to being a fantastic source of weekly gold, they also provide you with unique sets of gear that have set bonuses, as well as potent jewelry pieces. Now as soon as you hit item level 302, you simply do enough activities to upgrade your gear to 340, unlocking the very first set of Abyssal Dungeons, the first being Demon Beast Canyon a requirement to opening the second Abyssal Dungeon in Tier 1. Because of that, we think it's necessary to break down the dungeon, including all boss fights, in a straightforward, digestible manner, so that any player potentially stuck on this content can continue on with their progression. The lead-up to each major fight will only be talked about if there is a difficult mechanic. Otherwise, most of the focus will be on breaking down each boss's respective moveset and core fight mechanics to help you be as successful as possible. Now, each part of the dungeon will be broken down into chapters down below, so feel free to jump around to the section that you specifically need. The very first boss that you will encounter in Demon Beast Canyon is Corrupted Vazuela, a blood oozing monstrosity. And while this fight is pretty straightforward, the mechanics are likely where this encounter might cause some difficulty, so we'll start there. Now, during the fight at random, the boss will aggro a specific player, denoted by this marker above that player's head. When you see this, that player must run to a side or section of the map away from the other players, and the core fight that is taking place. After a short duration, the boss will spawn a persistent AoE at that target's location. Now the keyword here is persistent. These do consistent damage while in them, and can even overlap, leading to health pools not lasting very long. The other mechanic that you'll need to be aware of is staggering the boss. In order to clear the field of these AoEs, players must stagger the boss with stagger damage. Pretty simple. Now in terms of attack patterns, we only really have four to worry about. The boss at any time will swing its arm towards a player, dealing damage and pushing the player back. Now keep that in mind as abilities with push immunity can continue to cast or channel through this attack. Next up, after a short period of standing still, the boss will begin to channel a large, growing AoE. Stay outside the range of this ring to avoid the resulting explosion, but be sure to wait at least a second before re-engaging the boss, as this attack does linger in that AoE. Now at random times, the boss will also launch itself up into the air. When it does so, an AoE will target a location before the boss comes slamming down, damaging everything within the small radius. When this happens, players need to either be right on the outside edge of this explosion, or a fair distance away. This is because not even a second after the initial explosion occurs, a large outer ring will rapidly grow, resulting in a second larger outer ring explosion. Now finally, Vazuela will telegraph a straight line AoE. After a short cast time, the boss will roll into a ball and shoot straight down that path that deals damage and throws back everything in the way. Upon reaching the end of the path, the boss will take a short amount of time to stand up before re-engaging with the players. Now this is a great opportunity here for heavier hitting skills and back damage focused attacks. And honestly, that's it. The fight is that straightforward. But as I mentioned earlier, if you don't keep the persistent AoEs localized to an area while also taking the time to fully remove them, the boss arena can get very crowded very quickly. The second and final boss in this dungeon, Scar Krill, is a little more mechanic heavy than the previous one, a common theme across all Abyssal dungeons that you'll encounter while progressing. Now here we will take some time to talk about each attack before getting into the major mechanic, as combat heavily occurs prior to the mechanic taking place. In total, Scar Krill has six major attacks that you'll need to watch out for. First up, at any time during the fight, the boss can cast several small AoEs that detonate after a short time. These deal moderate damage and also lift any players hit by them up into the air, so watch your step around the arena. Next up, at any time, the boss can teleport to a location near a player, striking in a small frontal AoE, followed immediately by a circular spin attack that can launch a player away from them. This hits decently hard, and the second AoE spin attack should be always avoided. Now the next two attacks are both AoE cone attacks. The first happens when the boss casts two cone-shaped AoEs on either side of him that deal channeled staggered damage. The second is a large AoE conal attack that occurs in front of him that is similar to the first cone attack in terms of damage and duration. This is one of the best times to get behind the boss. 
Both of these conal attacks have long animations, which provide great opportunities to get damage in. Now the boss can also throw out a ranged hook attack, originating from his front, that deals damage and pushes anyone hit back, which can be devastating in combination with his frontal AoE hook. Last up, at any time with almost no telegraph, the boss will fire out five orbs in a fan pattern from his front side. As with a majority of mechanics in this fight, it is best to keep behind the boss as often as possible. Now that those are out of the way, let's go over the major mechanic of this fight, one that if you do not execute, will result in a wipe. As the fight goes on, you'll notice a red square buff on the boss with a sword inside. This shows how much darkness the boss has absorbed over the course of the fight. When it reaches six stacks, the mechanic will begin. Now four orbs will spawn at clock positions three, six, nine, and 12. As a group, pick an orb and travel to it. Once near the orb, do not attack the orb. Simply wait for the boss to teleport onto one aggroed party member and have everyone dash away. The boss will very quickly perform a spin attack that will kill the orb and impair the boss. Now you need to do this four times, once at each position, and the mechanic will conclude. Failing to do so, as we mentioned, will result in a wipe. Now this fight is a bit more hectic and requires a team to effectively communicate, either in voice chat, chat, or via pings. Otherwise, you will have a rough time. Also, since most of the boss's attacks occur from the sides or front, it is best to always reposition your team behind the boss. And just like that, you've cleared the very first Abyssal Dungeon, granting you access to the next dungeon in Tier 1. Hopefully, this guide helped you effectively tackle each encounter and boss that this dungeon had to throw at you. It's our first real taste at raid-like mechanics, and it only ramps up in difficulty from here. If this is your first time tackling an Abyssal Dungeon, we wanted to also put a small note here at the end. Special resources such as Knight's Oath can both drop from encounters, as well as from dismantling the armor that you get from these dungeons. Since your goal in completing these dungeons is trying to get a full set of the dungeon gear for progression, any items that you don't get as a drop can be purchased from the vendor with a sword icon with these special resources, saving you time and keeping you on your progression path. You can then use the gear transfer system to migrate your upgrades on your previous armor set to the new Abyssal gear, saving you time and resources. Anyways guys, Kodiak and I like to keep these things nice and short, and I'm sure many of you just want to dive back into the game. We want to say from the bottom of our heart, thank you so much for all the support on our Lost Ark videos. It's honestly been incredible. You can expect a ton more from both Kodiak and myself in the upcoming months, so keep it right here by hitting that like button and subscribing to the channel. And remember, you can always join Legacy Gaming on Discord if you are just looking for a great group of people to play with on US East Regulus. We also have an active waitlist to get into any of our Legacy Guilds, so just check out the link below to join the Discord and learn more. Now, my name is Livid, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching, and play on!